Welcome to another edition of VRC TV. This week we're joined by last season's Metropolitan Jockey Premiership winner Bailey Nodif, who's uh, on the comeback this Saturday from a different kind of injury. We'll get to that shortly, but uh, first, what a great week for Queensland sport. Ash Barty winning Wimbledon on Saturday night and then the Queensland origin side uh, getting some sort of uh, redemption, I suppose, there at the Gold Coast on Wednesday. So it's been a great week for sport, hasn't it, Bailey? Yeah, it has. It's been really big. Um for the sport, um, obviously really good to see Ash Barty yeah. um, win in Wimbledon and, and Queensland sort of get, getting the win um, last night. So yeah, it's been a big week, big week in sport. Do you count tennis amongst your talents? I'm not very good at it. I there do. you go, a jockey admitting he's not yeah, good at something. I'm, you don't I'm not you very good that at too it. often. Not very good at it. I do like to go and have a, have a play every now and again, but um, yeah, can't really say I'm much good at tennis. All right. July is a month where the carnival's behind us, but we talk a lot about um, premierships and whatnot. And this time last year, that was that was yourself in that great position. Although the season didn't finish off great yeah. with the way it, way it ended up, but I remember last year Ryan Maloney was was very um, congratulatory of, of your efforts. And you know, fast forward 12 months, and it looks like he's going to get his first premiership here in Queensland. Yeah, 100 percent. Obviously, um, Ryan's a really good bloke, and he he works hard on his weight. So um, for him to be racking up as many winners as he is and um, riding as well as he ever has. It's, it's really good to see and a um, uh, big congrats to him if he does um, go on to win it. Yeah, that's great. Now you've been out of the saddle for a little while. Mm -hmm. Talk us through why. Yeah, so I had a, um, I was getting quite crook, crook with tonsillitis um, there for for a little bit and um, doctors pretty much said just to get him out. So um, mm -hmm. got a suspension at Kilcoy probably a couple of weeks ago and and booked that in and yeah we've been out out for about 10 days but um, I love how jockeys work everything around suspensions yeah. like holidays are worked around suspensions yeah, exactly. and, and even even operations well, yeah it's pretty full full on when you're going so um, you sort of got to put put your when you do have some spare time you've got to sort of sort it out and and stuff like that but yeah so had um had that operation done and been back at track work all week so ready to go for Saturday would have knocked you around for a few days yeah it did um, I'm a bit of a silk, so <laughs> midway through. People mid, back mid, that up, I suppose. Midway so. through last week, it was hell, but um, no, we're back now. Yeah, you've missed out like amazing times, sort of with the, mm. the COVID, and it continues to go on. Jockeys sort of lived in a bubble for a while there yeah. last year, so to speak. We've got a little bit of distance between us today. Fortunate here in Queensland, but how do you find that that, that strict the strict protocols that, that come into place mm. during that time? Yeah, obviously at the start it was um, pretty hard to sort of adjust to, but. It's been going on for so long now, it, it just it just seems normal, so um, hopefully it can all sort of start to get better. It seems like it is starting to get better and then it, then it gets worse again, so um, it's a bit of a tricky situation, but something we all just have to deal with. You've got a very nice ride to come back to on Saturday in shooting for gold. Now, you must have ice in your veins. Let, let's let's go back and relive this this first up win of this horse. He was, he was backed off the map, everyone around Australia is... Um, on this horse, and we're watching Bailey Nodif at the 300 metres. So when are you going to get out? But tell us what's going through your mind at that when you just face with a wall of horses in front of you. Yeah, so obviously um, he he jumped really well and really well, which was quite surprising for him. And um, being first up, he, he, he raced a touch fresh and we well, probably closer than we wanted to be in the run. Um, so yeah, so at the 300, I was sort of following Ryan Maloney, um, and he sort of just sort of rolled out a bit on the corner. I, he was traveling that good shooting for gold he sort of poked himself into a spot where I didn't want to be the bias was sort of to get to the crown so I sort of had to come back and and just hold him up which was the plan in at the start anyway from Stephen Matt just to sort of hold him up and really expose him late and let him dash but um, Ryan sort of rolled in and I've sort of come out and then Ryan's rolled out and um, yeah we sort of missed the run there for a bit and Anyway, lucky enough, the, the run come and he dashed through and, and won really impressively. So was there a point where you're thinking, oh, this is not going to work out? Yeah, there was There was an ugly point there, especially <laughs> when sort of Spirit's Choice rolled in on top and Devil's Temptation sort of rolled out. But, um, you know, sort of Eagle Farm gives you that, that opportunity with the long straight that if you do get caught up early, you, you've got that long run in. So um, no, a really good win in the end. Is he the sort of horse, though, though, that being held up that little fraction probably helps him a little bit? Yeah, 100%. Um, it's a horse that if you go from 0 to 100 on real quick, he'll, he'll lose his action and he, and he won't be as dynamic in the finish. So um, being held up and sort of let it, allowing him to sort of go through his gears at his own pace um, really helps him. And as you could see um, from the other day, he, he was really explosive late and really stretched out well. All right. Well, you'll have um, probably even more punters uh, on him on Saturday. He's yeah. even shorter this time around. So. Hopefully the punters don't have to 
check their, their hearts again and hopefully likewise for you. But but thanks for joining us and look, July, June, July hasn't been a great couple of years for you the last yeah. two years. So hopefully it's smooth sailing for you now. Welcome back and look, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks heaps, Nath. We mentioned at the top of the show it's been a great week for Queensland sport and another great moment came on Wednesday there when the Gollan Stable knocked up their second consecutive century of Metropolitan winners for the season. We caught up with assistant trainer Craig Kavner. Craig Kavner, uh, the Tunny Gollan Stable rings up the century of Metropolitan winners for the second time today. It's obviously a great achievement not only for Tony but everyone associated with the stable. Yeah uh, Nathan being a great achievement by Tony plus uh, everybody that works at the stables. Um, the staff, if you don't have staff, you, you, you don't um, achieve these sort of uh, goals. Um, and at the moment, we've got a great staff behind us, and um, it was great to get the 100 winners. It's funny, it took, took forever for a, for a trainer to get to a century in, in Queensland, and now Tony's been able to do it two years in a row. Yeah, last year we were lucky enough to um, train 105 and a half winners for the year, and, um, and this year with uh, six meetings to go, I think it is, um, to get the 100 winners is great. The two winners, you've had the two two-year-old winners here at Doombin on, on Wednesday, both looked impressive. Brentwood first, he's regularly related in those black soil bloodstock colours. Yeah, um, those black and white colours, they seem to salute everywhere. Um, he's a nice, nice horse, uh, Brentwood. I uh, was ready to go to the races last preparation, but uh, pulled the plug on him after a trial. Said uh, a little bit immature, let's give him a bit of time, and uh, he's reaped the benefits today. Well, he's certainly well bred, that's for sure. Uh, Self-indulgent, that was the most impressive win to the eye. This one's sort of been a little slower coming to hand? Yeah, um, she was, uh, from day one, she was a little bit a uh, little bit backward, immature. Uh, come in and had short preparations, go back out again. Um, this time, come back in, a little bit more switched on. From her first short jump out at uh, Eagle Farm on the dirt, she's just come ahead and leaps and bounds. And just on the staff again, like Tony's the one who fronts the camera, but behind the scenes, you would see it yourself. The, the people who work there, they get very attached to these horses. Yeah, well, as you'd notice here today, there's a few girls that ride the, um, some of them work. Um, over my shoulder, you'll probably see um, uh, young uh, Maddie there with um, Liza with a Z. She rides her in all the track work. Uh, she rides self-indulgent in all the track work. It's very attached to her horses. Um, she even had a little tear in her eye when that first horse won, so that's how attached they get to them. Yeah, and so it's so, so a nice celebration this week, or? Um, I'll wait till Saturday night and I'll, I'll have a frothy then. Big tone, give anyone any time off at all? Or? Um, what's that? <laughs> well, Bart joins us now. But the carnival's behind us, so we get to July, to time of year, we talk about the premierships. Uh, we just heard from Craig Kavner with Tony Gullen knocking off another 100 winners. Uh, we spoke to Bailey Nodiff earlier in the show, won the, the jockey premiership last year. It looks like Ryan Maloney's going to take that crown this year. Yeah, Ryan Maloney's had a stellar year and a particularly uh, good effort to be at top of the table at the moment because he rode a fair bit in Sydney in the, in the autumn and uh, I, I think that he's been the, the standout. Jim Burns had a good year and there's some ones coming through, but I'm pleased you mentioned Bailey Nodiff because I think he had a year to forget and he's got himself set again. I just hope he can keep his weight under control because I think he's set to really blossom again. Yeah, he's had a few setbacks, so hopefully he is on the right path. Now, you're hoping that, that he kicks off with a winner here on, on Saturday on, on the comeback ride. I think he's on a moral shooting for gold race too, and he's a morals price too, but we'll get uh, a little bit of a bank there and maybe fire a bit uh, later in the day. But I thought he was ultra impressive first up, and he's got a good second up record. Oh, so he's nice and short. Where do we go to next? I think Avi Moore's got a good chance. Hasn't appeared since uh, early January, but Barry Lockwood's uh, taken the services of uh, Kyle wilson Taylor, and I, I think that they're under these the three kilo weight allowance there for this promising young rider, uh, I suspect Barry's got it ready to go at a thousand metres, and she's got a good record, three wins from five starts. There's a really good rap on Kyle wilson Taylor, isn't there? Yeah, look, some very good judges from the Downs rate him very highly, and it's going to be exciting to see him. I think he's going to get some great opportunities. You can see already this Saturday some some good stables are giving him opportunities. And the Kelly Schwerer stable's been in pretty solid form with a couple of winners this week and a couple of near misses. Do you think that uh, that winning form can continue? Yeah, Miss Hipstar very good at the Sunshine Coast last week and uh, I think that he can get a winner here at London Bank at race five. He uh, was graded good enough to run in a couple of black type races in New Zealand. He's had two runs for Kelly and 1400, 1600, now 1800, good progression. Don't think it's a hot race and uh, I thought his last start effort when a third here at the mile was good. Oh, well, thanks for that, Bart. Hopefully there's a couple of winners there and hopefully you find a few winners this weekend as well.